نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدري و يسر لي امري و احلل عقدتا من لساني يفقه قولي و جعل لي وزير من اهلي اللهم فكهنا في الدين اللهم ارنا الحق حقا و ارزقنا اتباعا اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا و ارزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ سورہ یونس دی سورہ واز ریویلڈ ڈیورنگ دا مکی اسٹے اف پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اٹ ہیز 109 ورسز 11 سٹینزاز 10th by the order of arrangement and 51st by the order of revolution and from here we will be starting the third group of the surahs of quran regarding the period of revolution the the surah was revealed in the last part of the stay in makka before emigration from makka the opposition was at the climax and the persecution was extreme so in this phase it was important to train them to be patient and to stay steadfast in their faith and belief the summary of the topics is that the basic message of the surah is to strengthen the belief and faith in allah in prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in quran and the day of judgment and the surah has clearly highlighted that all those who have faith and then they obey the teachings of Allah and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they will be successful and those who are disobedient they will fail so to explain the summary of the um, the whole topic or the summary of the chapter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give examples from within ourselves then examples from around us that is the creations of the universe and then examples from the past and the fourth type of examples will be coming from the happenings prophesized for the future that is for the day of judgment so to highlight that all those who will obey they will be successful and all those who will disobey will be a total failure these four types of examples have been quoted very frequently in quran and that is how we will go about in this surah and in surah hud also bismillahir rahmanir rahim alif lam ra tilka ayatul kitab al hakim Alif Lam Ra these are the verses of the wise book so right at the start of the chapter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces introduces very effectively uh, to the book and Allah calls that the book has verses which are full of wisdom verse number 2 have the people been amazed that we have revealed to a man from among them saying warn mankind and give good tidings to those who believe that they will have a firm precedence of honor with their lord but the disbelievers say indeed this is an obvious magician indeed your lord is allah who created the heavens and the earth in 6 days and then established himself above the throne why arranging the matters of his creation there is no intercessor except after his permission that is allah your lord so worship him then will you not remember then introduction to the creator the sustainer of the universe his attributes his power authority and control inviting towards what inviting towards his obedience and his worship only verse number 4 to him is your return altogether it is the promise of allah which is 
truth. Indeed, he begins the process of creation and then repeats it that he may reward those who have believed and done righteous deeds in justice, but, but those who disbelieved will have a drink of scalding water and a painful punishment for what they used to deny. So now here is the introduction to the life hereafter and the justice of Almighty Allah on the day of judgment. It is he who made the sun a shining light and the moon a derived light and determined for it phases that you may know the number of years and account of time. Allah has not created this except in truth. He details the sign for people who know. Allahumma ja'alna minhum rabbi zidni ilma. Indeed, in the alteration of the night and the day, and in what Allah has created in the heavens and the earth are signs for people who fear Allah, who can create, what Allah is trying to say is that Allah, who can create day after night, he can obviously very easily create hereafter, after this world. Indeed, those who do not, who do not expect the meeting with us are satisfied with the life of this world and feel secure therein and those who are heedless of our signs. So here, despite all these signs and all these introductions to the book, to the Prophet, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite this, people, they fail to believe and they fail to have fear in hereafter. And uh, what they do, is what will their end be? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains again, for those who fail to believe, for those their refuge will be the fire because of what they used to earn. And then Allah says, on the contrary, those believers, those who are believers and they believe in Allah, in Prophet, in Quran, and in the day of judgment, they will have the glad tiding of what? Indeed, those who have believed and done righteous deeds, their Lord will guide them because of their faith. Beneath them, rivers will flow in the gardens of pleasure. Their call, their end will be exalted are you subhanallah and their greetings there will be peace salamun alaikum and the last of their call will be praise to allah alhamdulillah lord of the worlds so in the verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that the inmates of jannah will be praising and they will be exalting and they will be remembering allah saying what Subhanallah and Alhamdulillah. We learn that the, the remembrance of Allah and we learn the excellence from this. What do we learn? We learn the excellence of the remembrance of Allah and we learn the excellence of these two, uh, these two phrases used for exaltation of Allah. Now, the second question is, why will these inmates of heaven, of uh, Jannah, why will they say subhanallah? Obviously, and very obviously, because when they will enter Jannah, they will enter Jannah, Jannah, the place which no eyes has seen, no ears have heard, no heart has felt. Jannah, the place for which Prophet Sallallahu said, it is the space to where the space to place a whip is better than all the world and what is in it. So when they will see and when they will receive the stage of Jannah, the blessings of Jannah, seeing the spectacular beauty and the marvelous blessings, they will spontaneously praise the creator, the merciful Allah. And moreover, this saying of subhanAllah will also be because during their lifetime, when they used to see or when they used to come across some splendid creation or blessing of Allah, they were as trained by the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu and they were in the habit of saying Subhanallah, contrary to saying like the wow of all the people who are the disbelievers. And then why would they say Alhamdulillah? Why would they remember Allah by being thankful and by exalting him is because they had adopted the manner of gratitude in their worldly life. They were grateful. They were the grateful bondsmen of Allah in their worldly life. 
So according to their previous temperament and habits, they will express their gratitude to Allah similarly when they will receive the blessings in Jannah. And moreover, after a long, hectic journey after death, ultimately reaching their destination of Jannah, they will sigh. They will, there will be a sigh of relief and they will say, Alhamdulillah. And above all, Prophet Wasallam has been reported to tell all of us that exaltation and tasbih will be made instinctive, will be made instinctive for all the inmates of Jannah, just like breathing has been made instinctive for all the people in this worldly life. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And if Allah was to hasten for the people the evil they invoke, as He hastens for them the good, their term would have been ended for them. But we leave the ones who do not expect the meeting with us in their transgression, wandering blindly. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. And when affliction, affliction touches man, he calls upon us, whether lying on his side or sitting or standing. But when we remove from him his affliction, he continues in disobedience as if he had never called us. Uh, he, he had never called upon us to remove, remove an affliction that touched him. Thus is made pleasing to the transgressors that which they have been doing. The message of this verse is that Allah wants his bondsmen to call Almighty Allah in all situations and all circumstances. May he be blessed or deprived. May he be healthy or sick. May he be happy or sad. May he be rich or poor. In all the situations, the bondsmen should obey Allah, submit to Allah, Thank Allah, remember Allah, be grateful to Allah, and above all, to surrender and to supplicate to Allah. And we had already destroyed generations before you when they wronged and their messengers had come to them with clear proofs, but they were not to believe. Thus, do we recompense the criminal people? Then we made you successors in the land after them so that we may observe how you will do. Remember, this world is a place of trial. All the blessings of Allah are trial for the bondsmen. Allah blesses with power, with authority, wealth, health, all. Why? To see how people react, how they respond. As Allah says in the Quran, and when our verses are recited to them as clear evidences, those who do not expect the meeting with us say, bring us a Quran other than this or change it. Say, it is not for me to change it on my own accord. I only follow what is revealed to me. Indeed, I fear if I should disobey my Lord, the punishment of a tremendous day. Say, if Allah has willed, I would not have recited it to you, nor would he have made it known to you, for I had remained among you a lifetime before it. Then will you not reason? So who is more unjust than he who invents a lie about Allah or denies his sign? Indeed, the criminals will not succeed, and they worship other than Allah, that which neither harms them or benefits them. And they say, these are our intercessors with Allah. Say, do you inform Allah of something he does not know in the heavens or the earth? Exalted is he and high above what they associate with him. And mankind was not but one's community, but one community united in religion, but then they differed. And if not for the word that proceeded from your Lord, it would have been judged between them immediately concerning that over which they differ. And they say, why is a sign not sent down to him from his Lord? So say, the unseen is only for Allah to administer. So wait, indeed, I am with you among those who wait. 
And when we give the people a taste of mercy after adversity has touched them, at once they conspire against our verses, say, Allah is swifter in strategy. Indeed, our messengers record that which you conspire. It is he who enables you to travel on land and sea until when you are in the ships, they sail with them by a good wind and they rejoice therein. There comes a storm wind and the waves come upon them from everywhere and they assume that they are surrounded, supplicating Allah, sincere to him in religion. If you should save us from this, we will surely be among the thankful but when he saves them, at once they commit injustice upon the earth without right. O oh, mankind, your injustice is only against yourself, being merely the enjoyment of the worldly life. Then to us is your return, and we will inform you of what you used to do. The example of this worldly life is but like rain, which we have sent down from the sky that the plants of the earth absorb, those from which men and livestock eat until when the earth has taken on its adornments and is beautified and its people suppose that they have the capability over it. There comes to it our command by night or by day and we make it as a harvest as if it had not flourished yesterday. Thus, we do explain in detail the signs for people who give thought. And Allah invites to the home of peace and guides whom he wills to a straight path. Allahumma ihtina sirat al mustaqim. And from them who have done good is the best reward. An extra, no darkness will cover their faces, nor humiliation. Those are the companions of paradise. They will abide therein eternally. Who will these be? These lucky people will all will be all those who did what they did. They were the doers of good. They were the kind. They were the merciful who used to wipe off the tears of the people and who used to spread happinesses. So these will be the people whom, whose faces will not be covered with darkness. Allahumma ja'alla minhum. But they who have earned the blame for evil doings, the recompense of an evil deed is its equivalent and humiliation will cover them. Whom who humiliated others, who dishonored others, they will have from Allah no protector. It will be as if their faces are covered with pieces of night. So dark are they. Those are the companions of fire. They will abide therein eternally. And mention, mention the day. We will gather them all together. And then they will say to those who associated others with Allah, who associated others with Allah, remain in your place, you and your partners. Then we will separate them. And their partners will say, you did not use to worship us. And sufficient is Allah as a witness between us and you, and that we were of your worship unaware. There on that day, every soul will be put to trial for what it did previously and they will be returned to Allah their master the truth and lost from them is whatever they used to invent say who provides for you from the heaven and the earth or who controls hearing in sight and who brings the living out of the dead and brings the dead out of the living and who arranges every matter, they will say, Allah, so say, then will you not fear him? For that is Allah, your Lord, the truth. And what can be beyond the truth except error? So how are you averted? Thus the word of your Lord has come into effect upon those who defiantly disobeyed that they will not believe. Again, continuously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the attributes as a comparison to all those who were made partners with him. Say, are there of your partners any who begins creations and then repeats it? Say, Allah begins creation and then repeats it. So how are you deluded? 
say, are there of your partners who are guides to the truth? Say, Allah guides to the truth. So he is, so is he who guides to the truth more worthy to be followed? Or he who guides not unless he is guided? Then what is wrong with you? How do you judge? And most of them follow, not except assumptions. Indeed, assumptions avail not against the truth at all. Indeed, Allah is knowing of what they do. And it was not possible for this Quran to be produced by other than Allah, but it is a confirmation of what was before it and a detailed explanation of the former scripture about which there is no doubt from the Lord of the worlds. Or do they say about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he invented it, what Quran say, then bring forth a surah like it and call upon for assistance whomever you can besides Allah, if you should be truthful. So this has been a challenge since the last 1400 years, five times in Quran, once in Surah Baqarah and four times in Surah revealed in Makkah did Allah make this open challenge. But in all these 1400 years, no one has succeeded in, in accepting and completing this challenge. Rather, they have denied that which has encompassed not knowledge and whose interpretation has not come to them. Thus, did those before them deny, then observe how was the end of the wrongdoers and of them are those who believe in it and of them are those who do not believe in it. And your Lord is most knowing of the corruptors. Allahumma la taj alna minhum. And if they deny then say, for me are my deeds, and for you are your deeds. You are disassociated from what I do, and I am disassociated from what you do. And among them are those who listen to you, but you can. But can you cause the deaf to hear, although they will not reason? They are not actually deaf. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling deaf, they are not actually deaf, but they act and they behave as deaf and dumb, dumb to the messages of Allah and to the commandments of Allah. And among them are those who look at you, but can you guide the blind? Although they will not attempt to see, indeed Allah does not wrong the people at all, but it is the people who are wronging themselves. And on the day when he will gather them, it will be as if they had not remained in the world, but an hour of the day, and they will know each other. Those will have lost who do not denied the meeting with Allah, and they were not guided. And whether we show you some of what we had promised them, or we take you in death, or to us is their return, then either way, Allah is a witness concerning what they are doing. And for every nation is a messenger. So when their messenger comes, it will be judged between them in justice and they will not be wronged. And they say, when is the fulfillment of this promise? If you should be truthful, say, I possess not for myself any harm or benefit except what Allah should build. For every nation is a specified term. When their term has come, then they will not remain behind an hour, nor will they proceed it. Say, have you considered if his punishment should come to you by night or by day, for which aspect of it would the criminals be impatient? Then is it that when it has actually occurred, you will believe in it now, and you were once for it impatient. Then it will be said to those who had wronged, taste the punishment of eternity. You are being recompensed except for what you used to earn. And they ask, inform. And they ask, inform of you, is it true? Say yes, by my Lord. Indeed, it is the truth. You will not, you will not cause failure to Allah. And if each soul that wronged had everything on the earth, it would offer it in ransom when on the day of judgment. And they will confide regret when they see the punishment and they will be judged in justice and they will not be wronged. 
unquestionably to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. Unquestionably, unquestionably, the promise of Allah is truth, but most of them do not know. He gives life and causes death, and to him, and to him you will all be returned. O oh, mankind, O oh, mankind, there has to come to you instructions from your Lord and healing for what is in the breasts and guidance and mercy for the believers. Say, in the bounties of Allah and in his mercy, I in let in that let them rejoice. It is better than what they accumulate. Say, have you seen what Allah has sent down to you of provisions of which you have made some lawful and some unlawful? Say, has Allah permitted you to do so or you do invent something about Allah? And what will be the supposition of those who invent falsehood about Allah on the day of resurrection? Indeed, Allah is full of bounty to the people, but most of them are not grateful. Allahumma ja'alni sabura wa ja'alni shakura. And you are not engaged in any matter or recite any of the Quran. And you people do not, do not do any deed except that we are witnesses over you when you are involved in it. And not absent from your Lord is any part of an atoms weight within the earth or within the heaven or anything smaller than that or greater but that it is in a clear register unquestionably unquestionably for the allies of allah there will be no fear concerning them nor will they grieve those who believed and were fearing allah for them are good tidings in the worldly life and in hereafter no change is there in the words of allah that is what is the greatest attainment and let not their speech grieve you. Indeed, honor due to power belongs to Allah entirely. He is the hearing, the knowing. Unquestionably, to Allah belongs whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth. And those who invoke other than Allah do not actually follow his partners. They follow not except assumptions and they are not but falsifying and it is he who made for you the night to rest therein and the day giving sight indeed in that are signs for people who listen and they have they have said allah has taken a son exalted is he he is the one free of need to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth you have no authority for this claim do you say about allah that which you do not know say indeed those who invent falsehood about allah will not succeed for them is brief enjoyment in this world then to us is their return and then we will make them taste the severe punishment because they used to disbelieve and Recite to them the news of Nu alayhi salam when he said to his people, O oh my people, if my residence and my reminding of the signs of Allah has become burdensome upon you, then I have relied upon Allah. So resolve upon your plan and call upon your associates and then let not your plans be obscured cure to you. Then carry it out upon me and do not give me respite. And if you turn away from my advice, then no payment have I asked of you. My reward is only from Allah, and I have been commanded to be of Muslims. And they denied him. So we saved him and those with him in the ship and made them successors. And we drowned those who denied our signs. Then see how was the end of those who were warned. Then we sent after him messengers to their people, and they came to them with clear proofs, but they were not to believe in that which they had denied before, because why? They were obstinate and they were stubborn. Thus we sealed over the hearts of the transgressors. Then we sent after them Musa salam, and Harun to Pharaoh and his establishment with our signs, but they behaved arrogantly and they were criminal people so when they came to them the truth from us they said indeed this is obvious magic musa salam said do you say thus about the truth when it has come to you that this is magic but magicians will not succeed 
They said, have you come to us to turn us away from that upon which we found our fathers and so that you too may have grandeur in the land and we are not believers in you. And Pharaoh said, Believe, bring to me every learned magician. So when the magicians came, Musa salam said to them, throw down whatever you will throw. And when they had thrown, Musa salam said, what you have brought is only magic. Indeed, Allah will expose its worthlessness. Indeed, Allah does not amend the work of corruptors. And Allah will establish the truth by his words, even if the criminals dislike it. But no one believed Musa except some youth among his people for fear of Pharaoh and his establishment that they would persecute them. And indeed, Pharaoh was haughty within the land. And indeed, he was of the transgressors. And Musa said, oh, my people, if you have believed in Allah, then rely upon him if you should be Muslims. So they said, upon Allah do we rely. Our Lord, make us not objects of trial for the wrongdoing of people and save us by your mercy from the disbelieving people. And we inspired to Musa and his brother, settle your people in Egypt in houses and make your houses facing the Qibla and establish prayer and give good tidings to the believers. And Musa said, our Lord, indeed you have given Pharaoh and his establishments splendor and wealth in the worldly life, our Lord, that, you may, that they may lead men astray from your way, our Lord, obliterate their wealth and harden their hearts so that they will not believe until they see the painful punishment. Allah said, your supplication has been answered, so remain on a right course and follow not the way of those who do not. And we took the children of Israel across the sea and Pharaoh and his soldiers pursued them in tyranny and enmity until when drowning overtook him, he said, I believe that, that there is no deity except that in whom the children of Israel believe and I am of the Muslims. Now, and you, you had disobeyed him before and were of the corruptors. So today we will save you in body that you may be to those who succeed you a sign. And indeed, many among the people of our signs are heedless. And we had certainly settled the children of Israel in an agreeable settlement, provided them with good things, and they did not differ until after knowledge had come to them. Indeed, your Lord will judge between them on the day of resurrection concerning that over which they used to differ. So if you doubt, so if you are in doubt about that which we have revealed to you, then ask those who have been reading the scriptures before you. The truth has certainly come to you from your Lord. So never be among the doubters and never be of those who deny the signs of Allah and thus be among the losers. Indeed, those upon whom the word of your Lord has come into effect will not believe, even if the sign should come to them until they see the painful punishment. Verse number 98, then has there been not a single city that believed so its faith benefited it except the people of Jonah when they believed. People of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, that is what he is called in English, when they believed, we removed from them the punishment of disgrace in the worldly life and gave them enjoyment for a time. This verse is because of the brief mentioning of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam is the cause for the name of the surah. And um, other chapters of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in greater detail explained the story of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, and I shall be explaining it there, inshallah. But the people of, uh, of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, they were forgiven. What happened was that when Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, he left in haste before the orders of immigration came, he left in haste before the orders of Allah. So when the signs of the torments of Allah and punishment of Allah came and the sky was all red as if it's going to spit fire of punishment on the people, then all the people remembered 
all the all the warnings which had this Yunus alayhi salam had been giving them. So all the people, the men, the women, even the children, they came out in the open land on the mountain tops and they knelt and they spread out their hands and they were crying and they were supplicating and they were seeking forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all their disobediences and, and the transgressions. And then Allah had mercy on them. And it was only because the Prophet had hastened and left them before the orders of Allah. And so by the order of Allah, all the signs of punishment were taken away and Allah had mercy on them and Allah forgave them. And had your Lord willed, those on the earth would have believed all of them entirely. Then would you compel the people in order that they become believers? And it is not for a soul to believe except by the permission of Allah. And he will place defilement upon those who will not use reason, say, observe what is in the heavens and the earth, but of no avail will be signs or warners to people who do not believe. So do they wait except for like what occurred in the days of those who passed on before them, say, then wait. Indeed, I am with you among those who wait. Then we will save our messengers and those who have believed. Thus, it is an obligation upon us that we save the believers. Say, O oh people, if you are in a doubt as to my religion, then I do not worship those which you worship besides Allah, but I worship Allah who causes your death, and I have been commanded to be of the believers and commanded, direct your face towards the religion, inclining to truth, and never be of those who associate others with Allah. And do not invoke besides Allah that which neither benefits you nor harms you. For if you did, then indeed you will be of the wrongdoers. And if Allah should touch you with adversity, there is no remover of it except him. And if he intends for you good, then there is no repeller of his bounty. He causes it to reach whom he wills of his servants, and he is forgiving the merciful. Verse 108, say, O mankind, the truth has come to you from your Lord. So whoever is guided is only guided for the benefit of his soul. And whoever goes astray only goes astray in violation against it. And I am not over you a manager. And follow what is revealed to you and be patient until Allah will judge. And he is the best of all the judges. So the last two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has summed up and repeated the basic message of the chapter. Since uh, in this verse, we need to remember this, that for the eternal success, what we need to do is, we need to do what the bear, we need to follow. Follow what? Ma yuha ilayka, what has been revealed to you. And after following this, we need to do what? Was bear, we need to stay patient. Until when do we need to stay patient? Why do we need to stay patient while obeying Allah, while following the orders of Allah and Prophet Wasallam? If we are going to face some social, economic, psychological, emotional uh, problems and issues and crises, then we need to stay patient. We need to stop ourselves from any form of stress and tensions and anxiety and stick up stick up to the obedience steadfastly and when till when do we need to do that hatta yahkumullah why do we need to that wa huwa khayrul haqimin because he is the best of all the judges so the life of companions companions of the of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are actually the working examples of obedience like this verse has suggested us like, if I remember and rate Hazrat Yasir and his wife and his family and his sons, they are actually a practical example of this verse. Hazrat Yasir and his family, they were one of the few lucky families where all the members of the family, they had embraced Islam. The mother, the father, the sons, all of them had embraced Islam. And 
outraged with the family, they were handed over to Abu Jahl, who would torture them and who would persecute them to the last limit, sometime persecuting the son in front of the mother, sometime the wife in front of the husband. And it was all form of physical and emotional and psychological persecution. But they remained steadfast in belief and they were patient in obedience till the last time, till the martyrdom of whom? Of Hazrat of Hazrat Sumayya, she was the first martyr of Islam. Allahumma rzukna shahadatan fi sabilik. Allahumma rzukna shahadatan fi sabilik. Allahumma rzukna shahadatan fi sabilik. Rabbana la taj'alna fitnatan lil qawmi zalimin.